All right, so we're going to be looking at some tips and tricks for creating um, the, the bridge design that you're working on. It's going to involve kind of longer geometry sweeps. We'll talk about lofts. Um, I'll talk about um, some of the sub D tools that come with Rhino. So this is going to be all kind of tips that are oriented to, to that type of geometry. Um, so the way Rhino is best kind of suited uh, in terms of a workflow is to start with curves, turn those curves into surfaces, and then turn those serves in, surfaces into 3D geometry, actual B reps or um, poly surfaces. So starting with you know simple curves, you can type curve and uh, create any freeform shape. If I want to duplicate this, I have my gumball turned on. That's uh, this triad that you see. So that can be turned on and off. Uh, at the bottom here, you'll see gumball. So by unchecking that, so I select that. And with this on, I can, I can move geometry uh, and curves, but I can also duplicate. So if I select it, hold Alt, and then pull it up, I can duplicate geometry. So if you have uh, a geometry that you're, you're working on, you can also select a curve and edit its control points too. So imagine if you have a, a bridge shape or we're looking at some kind of pedestrian footbridge, you know, you can just take a series of curves. I'm gonna use hold alt again and, and move this. And so, you know, with this simple method, you can start playing and editing the curves. Hold Alt. And so this is, you know, one strategy for, for creating curvature. And then after this, you can, there's a number of things you can do. We can loft these. So I can type loft, select the two curves, hit OK turn on shaded view. And so you can do this for all of your kind of perimeter curves, for example. Loft. And you know, these are also, if you go to uh, surface tools, you'll see all the different ways to generate a surface here, all right? So surface from three or four con uh, corner points, this is a surface from planar curves. These curves are three-dimensional, so they're not, you know, not all planar except for that one. Um, planar curves, every all the curves have to be planar for that command to work. You can create a surface from a network of curves. So if you have curves running kind of in a grid shell, you can generate a surface that way. There's the patch surface, which does its best to kind of figure out uh, surface based on the, the curves that you have. This is the one that we're using, loft. So I can click on it or I can type loft. So I can do this to create all of my edges. All right, so that's one technique. Um, so loft. There's another one um, that's interesting too for for this type of uh, project um, and that's sweep so a sweep basically it, you ask it rhino will ask you for a rail and for a profile and it's going to sweep the the profile along that rail so if i go to standard and and i find uh, control curve Maybe the, the profile I want to create is something like this. So rather than just having it, you know, connect A to B, it's gonna it's gonna sweep along this rail, uh, and this will be the profile. Okay, so I can type sweep one or sweep, and it asks for. So always look at the dialog box. Box it's asking for this the rail. So I'm gonna select that. Then it asks for the sweep shape, and I select that and hit enter. And so you'll notice it's kind of creating uh, 
its own shape here. We could also, um, there's also a sweep two. So if I type sweep two, it'll ask for two rails. So in this case, I want this rail and that rail. And then the sweep shape, which is this. And that's a much cleaner edge because it, it just has more information to work with and it kind of knows to approximate what you're dealing with there. Okay, so I, you know, I can play with this curve and you know, manipulate it. We can try that again. Sweep two, first rail, second rail, and then profile curve. So this can, can help you create some complex geometry. Th these are, you know, developable surfaces, um, but, you know, they can, they can also, uh, you can create complex curvature, double, double curvature is possible. All right, so that's uh, loft and sweep. Um, as far as other surface, tools are concerned. Um, like if I were to create a line connecting these, I'll show you the patch tool. So again, under surface tools, you'll see patch. I really don't like using patch because it's, it's difficult to control what that surface is going to look like. You'll see that it's going to kind of exaggerate when it creates this, but it's asking for the curves, points, clouds, or mesh to kind of fit through. So I'm going to select the curves, hit OK, and it's going to create a patch based on those curves. In this case, it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty much what we like, but there's other situations and scenarios where it'll generate surfaces that don't really follow what you want. It, it's a lot of interpretation that Rhino has to do. And the other thing you'll see, these are the the grid pattern that it makes on the surface is called the, uh, the UV. These are called ISO curves. They're basically the, the surface curvature of the, the geometry represented. Um, and so this has curves in the U and the V direction. Um, and so that it basically creates a grid to break up that geometry. So if you were to select this and hit F10. So in Rhino, when you hit F10, it turns on control points and these are also you know give you some freedom to manipulate the geometry and this can be difficult to control so i wouldn't recommend doing this for a surface like that because even after you hit escape now you know it's not based on this curve so it just makes things kind of difficult when you start pushing and pulling control points um, but those are better for more 3d uh, geometries that you're you're working with uh, poly surfaces and, and that kind of thing. Okay, so that's the kind of basics of taking a curve and going from curve to a lofted surface or a sweep. Um, there's a whole suite of solid tool um, tech tools here that you can work with. So if you have multiple geometries like this, I'm just going to hold Alt down to duplicate as I move. You know, you can do solid uh, addition and subtraction. Like if I wanted to subtract this geometry from this, you can use the Boolean difference. And again, you can click on the icon or just type in the text, but it's asking for select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. I select this, enter, with this, enter, and so it'll do that, right? So this is a very primitive uh, example, but it's a powerful tool, being able to subtract, to add, to create the difference, like the intersection between them. And there's other tools here like shell. If you want to create a, give this an actual thickness to its uh, material. All right, so now it just kind of opened that up and created a, a thickness to it. Um, so there's a whole series of solid tool uh, options here. Sub D. So this could also be a really useful uh, set of tools. The uh, it has its own primitives here, but Sub Ds allow you to create more um, kind of soft modeling in in Rhino. It allows you to uh, use 
either edges, surfaces, or, or vertices, control points, to manipulate a geometry, kind of like working with clay. So it's a, it's a different workflow, um, but it's, uh, it's better for creating soft geometry. So if you imagine like Pixar movies and you're creating characters and things like that, this type of geometry lends itself really well. So this, uh, this first geometry I created, in the top right here, you'll see selection filter for edges, faces, and vertices. So if I select faces, I can now, you'll see that at the bottom here, the selection filter pops up and this is set to sub D objects or sub objects. So when this is selected, I can't select this thing as a whole. I can only select the face, right? If I unselect this and hit disable, now I can select it as a whole. So just be aware that down here, these are, this is your selection filter. It basically makes it so that you can only select what's highlighted when it's enabled. But right now it's disabled, so I can select all that. But if I say sub objects, now it's only the, the faces that I can grab. And you'll see that I can now move these and stretch them again, like clay. It's like clay modeling for character animation and things like that. Okay, so this whole series of tools is meant to be manipulated that way. So I can hit control points and I can do the same thing with a ver vertex. Right, so the vertices can be manipulated. If I click, you can't see them, but you click and now it's the corner that I'm controlling. Same thing with edges. Right, edges can be manipulated here. So this could be a, a really interesting way to create freeform geometry in Rhino. So that's with starting with a primitive. You can start with a plane. And before you click, right, if I were to, or after I click, I can go down here and tell it how many grid divisions I want in each direction before I start clicking in Rhino. So if I want just three, enter, I can click here, three, enter, and now it's going to create a plane with three in each direction. And I can do the same thing, manipulate the face. So for many of you with complex curvature that you're, you know, designing with, this could be an effective tool for that. I hit escape, and again, when I want to select this whole thing as, a, as one geometry, I can deselect sub-D objects, disable, and now it's just one thing. But this is a sub-D object. I want to turn this into what's called a NURBS, um, or an, an actual surface. So I can select that, and over here you'll see uh, a couple different options. We can convert it to a NURBS geometry. So I can select it, hit convert to NURBS, hit enter, and now you'll see two things there. You'll see a surface and a sub D. I can select the surface, move it over. You can also turn this into a mesh. Um, so that you can hit this, so quad mesh, and this will basically uh, divide your geometry based on uh, kind of the number of divisions you want. So 2000 is a lot, I'll just say 100, hit OK, and it's going to convert this into a mesh, and it, it's kind of a, because I only did 100, it was kind of a low approximation of that, so if maybe you know you want to save on your memory or have a smaller file size then yeah this is the thing you would do but let's try that again with 2000 quads and that's you know trying to get 2000 um, subdivisions all right so that mesh has a lot more subdivisions and like any mesh, you can select it, hit F10, um, or control points on. Uh, 
Anyway, I know if I hit F10, it's going to stop the recording, so I won't do that here. But um, I think is it points on? Yeah, points on is the keyboard shortcut. So you can select these and manipulate these control points as well. Obviously, not a lot of control when you do that, but um, there's also soft move, which is another one if you want to manipulate a mesh and you want to do it with control points. Uh, I'm going to hit points on. And if I type soft move, you can select points. And you saw how when I moved it previously, it was really kind of abrupt. When you do a soft move, you select what you want to move, hit enter, point to move from, and it'll kind of create a, a fall off. So you can say, I want it to, to move, but very gradually. So you can do things like that, hit enter, hit escape, and it just kind of gradually moved those with a fall off that I created. So that could be one way to manipulate a mesh um, using the soft move command. Okay, but once again, I've duplicated that so I can go back to this and I can keep manipulating it. There's tons of, you know, and I encourage you to explore all the, the toolbar of options that you have for sub D. You can um, bridge it. So if I wanted to select this, duplicate, hold alt, there's the bridge command um, that allows me to basically take two patches. Oh, it asks, it asks for them individually. So I'm going to hit one, enter, the other, enter, and it's going to bridge that with this geometry. So, and again, I can go to the selection filter, select this, manipulate it. And when I'm happy with this, and again, I can make multiple of these. When I'm happy with this, I can turn off and disable selection filter, select this, and then I can turn this into uh, a NURBS. So I can select that. Basically creates a poly surface out of that. And you can see in the poly surface, there's, there's UV curves in this. Right. And there's a lot you can do. You can turn on symmetry. So when you have symmetry turned on, everything you do on one side will happen on the other. So it could be an effective kind of geometry tool. Um, that's this one. So reflect sub, -G, sub D geometry. It asks, what do you want to reflect? I'm going to select this one. It asks for the, the plane on which to reflect it. And now everything I do over here is going to be mirrored on the other side. So anytime you have symmetry or you're working on a you know, character animation, this could be a really effective thing. Or any furniture design or industrial design, this could be an effective tool for that as well, not just architecture. All right, so that's, that's a lot, but it's kind of a wide array. It's enough to get you guys started and start experimenting with some of these um, more kind of smoothing techniques in Rhino.